Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia, and in this video, I'm going to teach you the correct way to live tune your car in Need for Speed Heat. Let's go! First of all, thank you for joining me. I like to thank everyone for being here in the beginning of the video because I feel like YouTubers spend a lot of time asking for things and not enough time thanking the viewers. So anyways, thank you just for simply clicking on the video. If you have any questions about this video or any video, you can send me a DM on Instagram. I check every single DM, every single message, and all of the comments on my YouTube videos. So don't be afraid to comment and send me messages on Instagram. I may not get back to you right away, but I do read them and I will give you a thoughtful answer when I can. I've been asked this a few times, so I thought it couldn't hurt to make a quick video on it. What is live tuning and how do you use it? Well, let's get into it. I think that most people know that live tuning exists in Need for Speed Heat, but if you didn't, here's a quick explanation of it. It's the settings for your car that can be adjusted on the fly to change the way your car handles and feels. To get to this menu, just tap right on the D-pad while out of the garage. Then down on the D-pad and then right again to open the menu. In the live tuning menu, you have four options, steering sensitivity, downforce, traction control, and drift style. Once you get into this menu, you navigate around using the right joystick. This might feel a bit unintuitive, but it's actually quite genius. They designed the menu system to be completely operational while you're driving, and thus the name Live Tuning. You never use the right joystick for anything during a race, so you can make these adjustments on the fly. Let's say you just bought a new car and are unsure how it handles. Then you start racing it and find out it doesn't handle quite like you want. You can adjust it during the race and possibly better your results, although I think it will take some practice. This tends to mess up my concentration when I'm racing, but it can be done. Alright, so now let's talk about how to make adjustments depending on how the car is handling. First, understand that this menu is all about preference. What works for me might not work for you. You will likely need to make changes and test the settings before settling on the final setup for each car. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use the 2006 WRX because I haven't raced this car yet. I just built it up and need to live tune it for track racing, so let's do some testing. To start, I'm just going to run Sonic with the default settings just to see what it feels like and make some on-the-fly adjustments. So through this first turn, it didn't slide out quite as easily as I expected it to. So on the fly here, I'm going to go ahead and change the downforce. I'll decrease it a little bit. I won't minimize it all the way but I will decrease it quite a bit and then see how it goes through the next few turns. It still wasn't responding the way I hoped it to, so I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the downforce all the way to the minimum, and we'll see how that goes. On this upcoming turn, I like to take the bricks that are close to the building instead of following the road around the U-turn, and I can only do that if the car slides the way it should provided that the downforce and steering sensitivity are where they need to be. So let's go ahead and play the video and see how it turns out. Yeah, and the car understeered like crazy, which is what I thought was going to happen. So in order to fix that, I'm going to have to change the steering sensitivity and increase it so that it's more sensitive when hitting turns that are really sharp like that. I want to be able to turn sharp and fast. I wanted to leave the settings the way they were, but on this next turn I understeered again, 
which tells me I really need to be able to increase that steering sensitivity. It wasn't responsive enough early enough in the turn. I also could have hit the gas to initiate a slide, but chose not to to see how it was going to steer. This WRX is an all-wheel drive car. It sticks to the ground very well, but it's just a little too much. I want the rear end to slide a bit more in the turns, so during the race I adjusted the downforce to the minimum. This adjusts the amount of downward pressure being applied to the car, and thus making it easier for the car to slide. Also, I found that the steering was really tight. The car didn't whip around turns like I expected to, so I adjusted the steering sensitivity up a bit. Now I'm going to run the exact same race again and see how these settings feel. Aside from some driving mistakes by me, this race felt pretty good. I think I'd still like to slide just a little bit more, so I think I'll put some race tires on it and increase the steering sensitivity to the max. Also, I'm keeping the traction control off because that would make it so that the car would push less power to the wheels in the turns in order to keep the traction. And since I'm trying to get it to lose traction easier, I definitely don't want to turn that on. Also, I prefer to drive with the drift style set to gas because I don't want to have to slow down in order to slide the rear end. A quick tap of the gas makes the rear wheels break loose as long as I'm turning or about to turn, and that's the way I prefer it. All right, let's run this one last time. The car feels pretty good, but after swapping to race tires, I think it'll be perfect.
Okay, yeah, wow, look at the difference in the time and this race and the first two that I ran. Now I know I had a couple of mistakes in the first two races and in this race I ran pretty clean, but it's because of the settings that I've changed and now the car handles more like I expected to leading to less mistakes. This setup feels awesome. All right, so let's quickly recap the settings I chose and why. For steering sensitivity for this car, the steering was not responsive at all. It would take a long time for the car to turn tightly. Being able to turn tightly very quickly helps the rear end of the car slide out, and so I ended up cranking that all the way up. For downforce, again, this is the amount of downward pressure being put on the car. This also affects the car's ability to slide in the turns. This particular car is very sticky. It's glued to the ground. So I had to drop the downforce all the way down to the minimum, and I had to put race tires on, which are a tiny bit slipperier. For traction control, since the issue with this car was that it had too much traction, I kept the traction control off. If the car was a little too loose, I would have considered turning on this feature. And as far as the drift style goes, again, I prefer the gas setting on all of my cars. I would much rather hit the gas to start the slide than the brake. This is completely up to you though, it's your preference. This is just the method for how you start to drift or start to slide in a turn. Once the car is sliding, you have to give it gas to make it continue to slide, so this is just to get the drift started. And I prefer to get the drift started with the gas pedal. Minimum downforce and maximum steering sensitivity like I have here is only recommended for cars with extremely sticky traction with the default live tuning settings. If you feel like you're losing too much traction in corners, you would do the opposite of what I just did. And in general, I recommend keeping traction control off and drift style on gas, but again, you can change those to your liking. And honestly, that's it. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask me on either Instagram or here in the comments. Hopefully this has helped you out in some way as that's always my goal. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Trigger out.